In the video on my 2018 Appalachian Trail section hike, I told about conversations I had with two other hikers. We talked about rain and whether we would hike in the rain or spend the day in our tents. We had that conversation because the forecast was for a 100% chance of rain the next day with two more days of rain after that. And that is the lead-in to our topic. Why did we have those conversations? And what do we do if we're on the AT and ask ourselves the same question? That section hike took place in late October when daytime temperatures and the sunlight weren't much above 55 degrees, if that. And several nights it dropped down to near freezing, about 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold enough to frost, but it wasn't cold enough to snow, which meant it could rain. I hiked 10 miles in that first day of rain when it poured down on me about 4 hours total among a few starts and stops. And I had a good time. More about that in a minute. I had those talks separately with a southbound through hiker and a section hiker who had made several previous trips. We knew that if we got soaking wet in the summer, we could get dry the next day if the sun was out. This time, however, there'd be no sun for three days and the weather would vary between 15 and 30 degrees colder than the summer at least. So if we did get excessively wet, the risk is we'd stay that way for three days if not more and it would be cold. It's no secret, some AT hikers will tell us, it's impossible to stay 100% dry on the trail even in summer. And some have shown on social media how they stay in their tent in bad rain also in summer. When that October rain did arrive, I don't know what the through hiker did because I talked to him before he stopped for the night. The section hiker was still in his tent when I set off in the rain and I assume he stayed there for the day. Before the rain hit, I was seeing day hikers and section hikers by the dozen. During those 10 miles in the rain, I didn't see anybody. That's not much of a surprise. Not many people think it's fun to play outside with rain pouring down. When I talked to the other two hikers, I was mainly interested in what they thought. Even before I left home, I decided to hike in the rain no matter what. And it's important here for me to list the reasons why. And that's because not everyone will have the same reasons. And individuals have to make decisions that are right for their circumstances. One example is the hiker who stayed in his tent. He rode a Greyhound bus about 500 miles to get to the trail. I, on the other hand, was 10 miles from my car. His hike involved a deeper level of involvement than mine, for lack of a better way to put it. If my hike in the rain by some chance had turned into a near disaster, I could bail out when I got to my car. The other guy didn't have that option. In other words, he did what he thought was best, and I respect his decision. Another reason is that going back decades, I've been through an ocean of rain in the woods. So I have given rain a lot of thought and always operate under the assumption that rain will clobber me on a hike. To me, there's no maybe about it. I make lots of decisions based on that assumption, which helps my confidence. I need that confidence because, as I have said, I have a limited number of days for section hikes, and when I'm on one, I want to keep moving. Another reason is I've been through plenty of cold, wet weather off the AT, and this was my first chance to do it on the AT. I was going to get in on the fun I had so far missed. The forecast suggested the rain would start during the night, but it was still dry when I woke up at 6.30 in the morning. So I hustled to get ready and it was raining when I moved off. It was about 35 degrees Fahrenheit when I woke up and I doubt it got much past 40 all morning. So what was I wearing? Basically the same pants and shirts I would have worn in the summer, which are quick, drying, thin synthetics. To that, I added a tank top under the shirt, and I wore two pairs of underwear at once. I also wore a 100% polyester hoodie. Covering everything was a Frog Togs rain jacket. The jacket was going to be a first for me on the AT because I had always used a poncho in the rain before. With a couple of exceptions, it was a routine walk, but in the rain. For example, I fell down once in some wet leaves and almost fell a couple of more times. I was using trekking poles and my hands got pretty cold pretty quick. So I put on these, a pair of Brooks LSD Thermal Mittens, 100% synthetic. They cost about $40. After a couple of hours, they seemed pretty drenched, but my hands stayed warm. 
I take this as evidence of what others have said. When it comes to keeping us warm, fleece works when it's wet. The same can be said for wool for those with the inclination and money to buy wool. Another thing that happened is my quick dry convertible pants got wet from about mid-thigh down. During that 10 miles, the rain stopped a couple of times, about 30 to 45 minutes each. When it did, the pants legs began to get visibly drier very quickly. My legs also stayed plenty warm as I walked, so much so that I had the impression I could have been fine walking in shorts. That comfort level, however, probably would have ended quick as soon as I stopped for a break. At any rate, my pants once again showed me that synthetic quick-dry clothes do indeed dry pretty darn quick. A couple of times during the lulls in the rain, I partially unzipped the jacket and hoodie. I bought the hoodie for $23 on Amazon as a pullover. I cut it up the front and installed part of a large white sleeping bag zipper I got at a fabric store. Even in summer, I always carry a thin, long-sleeve fleece pullover, and I always sleep in it. I debated whether to wear it that day in the rain and decided to put it on. That was probably a good move, except for my hands. I never felt even slightly cold. Earlier in the hike, when it wasn't raining, I wore the hoodie all the time. It was very convenient to have a zipper. I often had the zipper open as I hiked, and zipped it shut when I stopped for a rest. Frog Togs rain jackets are cheap. I saw one for about $20 on Amazon in late 2018. They have no vents and they aren't very durable, but they do keep the rain out. They have a hood, which I wore in the rain. I also wore a synthetic ball cap. The bill stuck out from beneath the hood and kept my glasses dry. Some trail volunteer, very thoughtfully, sawed off a branch on a small tree right next to the trail. I brushed against it and snagged my jacket on what was left of the branch, sawed off to a very nice sharp point. So I tore a small hole in the frog togs, which is now patched with duct tape. I earlier told how Amazon would only let me buy a Sawyer Squeeze coupler if I bought something else that cost $25. So I got a pair of deck shell waterproof socks. I wore those in the rain and they worked fine. They got wet, but as far as I could tell, they did stay dry on the inside. The biggest issue I decided had nothing to do with any of this stuff. Only once in warm weather has my pack ever gotten wet and I didn't think it was a big deal. It only happened once because otherwise a poncho covered the pack during rain. On this section hike, the pack got drenched, but not the contents. Everything in the pack was in plastic bags like this. Clear pack liners from Gossamer Gear. I like them because I can see their contents without bothering to empty them. I didn't quite understand how completely soaked the pack was until I pulled into a motel that night and emptied it. This isn't something that would have compromised my safety had I stayed on the trail, but... I would have found the wet pack a nuisance inside my tent in the cold October weather with little chance to dry it out. The question can be asked, why don't I just buy a waterproof pack? I look at new gear all the time on the line, and every popular pack I look at is expensive and heavier than what I already have. The exception are 30 liter packs, but I already have a 30 liter pack. And even a waterproof pack won't stay as completely dry as a pack that's under a poncho. So, what are my options? From one standpoint, I could just shut up and deal with it. But, before my 2017 section hike, I told how I was pretty much freaked out by pack weight because of the long recovery I had from injuries in a head-on car crash. Now, after my latest section hike, I'm not quite so freaked out anymore. Maybe next time I throw my 8 ounce poncho into the pack. It's an old style poncho, which means it's a rectangle when it's laid out flat. And that means I could install buttons and loops at these spots. That would anchor the poncho at my wrist and keep me and my pack completely covered under the rain. Or I could take the poncho and replace the frog togs with a 2 ounce wind jacket from Z-Packs. And that would reduce the poncho weight penalty to 4 ounces. Commercial pack covers can pull off, and I've seen a couple of them lying in the mud on the AT. 
Even if the pack cover stays on, part of the pack will still get wet. I wouldn't consider one unless I could design something that nobody's thought of yet, which would be a challenge, and then sew the thing up myself. So the bottom line is I walked in four hours of pouring rain in near freezing weather and I felt very cozy and had a fun time doing it. The worst thing I can say is I fell down once, put a small hole in a $20 jacket and would have been irritated in my tent by a wet pack. The jacket, wet socks and mittens could have gone into plastic bags with no problem overnight on that trip. As I've said before, I always carry spare clothes, a Patagonia Capilene lightweight t-shirt and a pair of Montbell Dynamo wind pants. Together they weigh 5.6 ounces. In an absolute worst case scenario, if I could get in my tent, I could put on something dry. I also carried a thick pair of ankle socks only for sleeping. I discovered earlier, somewhat to my surprise, it's my feet that get cold and not my ankles, which means ankle socks keep my feet warm. My experience with the wet mittens has increased my confidence that the fleece hoodie is bombproof and it will never fail me. I emphasize that it's 100% polyester. Many cheap hoodies are either cotton or half cotton. If I was going to make this kind of cold weather backpacking a habit, and maybe I will, I would buy a pair of Montbell Tachyon wind pants. They are advertised to trap heat next to our skin, and I have heard others say that they do. A pair weighs about 2 ounces and cost $100 in late 2018. My Montbell Dynamo wind pants are about 2.5 ounces and they cost me $80. Even though I have fairly long legs, I had to hem mine to keep the legs out of the dirt. I used my normal 35 degree sleeping bag on this trip and it's almost an act of faith to use a 35 degree sleeping bag when it's actually 35 degrees. I hedged my bets by using one of these as a ground sheet. It's an emergency medical kits survival blanket. I cut it down to ground sheet size. Emergency Medical Kits also makes a survival bivy from the same material, which is basically fairly heavy mylar. I cut one down so it would pull up only a little higher than my waist. It now weighs 3 ounces and I wore it inside the sleeping bag. The idea behind the bivy is I slept in my pullover and hoodie and I've learned that if anything will get cold in the sleeping bag, it's probably going to be my legs and feet. I am not alone in this. I read that high altitude mountain climbers carried half sleeping bags that only went up to their waist because their normal climbing outfit was enough to keep them warm at night above the waist. Despite the cold, I used my normal three quarter length cheap Coleman sleeping pad which is about a quarter inch thick. One night my feet got so cold that I woke up. I sat up and turned on a light to figure out what was causing this. It happened because I rolled over and my feet were off of the space blanket ground sheet, which I take as evidence it definitely helped. It has an orange side and a silver side. I used it silver side up. So that's my story and now we're done. If you follow me on Facebook, you probably saw my poll about doing a day hiking video. I thought I should do this one first. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so because I have more videos planned. And like I always say, thanks a million for watching.